let's look at bank credit creation. Let's start with the USA, the largest economy. And what we find is, oh, surprise, surprise, we had huge bouts of massive bank credit expansion, um, peaking here in, in March, 1st of March, um, 1973, at 16.4%. There was a second peak then in 78. And these, of course, clearly precede the inflation that was measured. The oil price only started rising in October 73. The credit boom started in 71, 13.5%, and peaked by mid 73. So, surprise, surprise, it was the money creation that created inflation, not the war and the sanctions and the energy price shock. And that is a very important lesson, of course, for our present day. Um, look at Germany, highest bank credit growth um, in the post-war era was recorded suddenly in the early 70s. Credit boom started in 71, peaked in March 73 at 14.4%. The oil price shock only came in, in uh, September, October 73. So it was the credit creation that caused the high inflation, not the war or the oil price shock. Japan, another example. So he actually peaked even earlier at 25% bank credit growth in December 72. And they're telling us, oh, it's the October 73 oil price shock that caused the inflation. You also notice how coordinated this is, how coordinated the central planners do their, their cycles and their money printing. Um, so the 2020, <coughs> events, what happened there, and what confused a lot of people is if you compare this to 2008, because of course the Federal Reserve was creating a lot of money in 2008 with the financial crisis, and some people were warning, oh, this is going to lead to inflation, but it didn't happen, and that's what called out a lot of people in 2021, 2022. But then it was clear in 2008 that we're not going to have inflation, as I told people at the time. Why? Remember, the, the big wheel is bank credit. And the Federal Reserve, the central bank is only a small wheel. It has to turn faster, but it's a tiny cog. So the banks, the gray line here, they were reducing credit creation, was shrinking massively 2009 throughout the year, 2008, 2009. So the bulk of the money creation had turned negative. And that's when the Federal Reserve stepped in. And yes, they created a lot of money, but well, this. If we have time, we can talk about the details. Most of it didn't go into circulation, actually. It was used to bail out the banking system, which is an accounting booking exercise and doesn't actually go into the economy. Couldn't therefore possibly create inflation anywhere, even if it had gone in there. But the main issue was that the banks were reducing the money. So total money supply therefore was not actually expanding. And that's very different from um, 2020 onwards where bank credit creation was really over, growing at over um, 10%, 11%. And the Federal Reserve then stepped in and created a lot of money. So now the Federal Reserve has been um, reducing its credit creation for a while already, but bank credit creation remains very high at around 10%, which you know is among the highest growth rates. So that's why we have the inflation.